All right, so this video is going to be a product review video of Cicada Audio's brand new Pro Coax Horn speakers that they just dropped. These are the Cicada Audio CHX8. and 8.4 with a different ohm load tweeter that's offered in these. The reason I have them both sitting here next to each other is because I want to go over the new speaker first and then give you what's different between this one and this one to make sure you select the proper speaker for your application because I'm going to preface this right now. I am not going to give you which speaker is better because that is a loaded question. Both of these speakers shine in their own perspectives um, and in their own applications. So there will be applications, which I will get to later, where one speaker choice is going to be better than the other, but that does not mean one speaker is better than the other. So I absolutely dislike that question of, what's the best speaker on the market? It's completely subjective to application. I'm just gonna leave it up to application. Um, so let's talk about the new Cicada CHX 8 inch speakers. So the first thing I want to point out is this thing, as much as it looks a lot like the previous model CHs, these are different. It's a different tooled basket. The voice coil sizes are different. The cone material is different. The overall design of the speaker is different. They share a lot of similarities because they're both coax horn speakers, but I've got my notes here. So we're gonna go down the list of explaining what is here to help you under, better understand this speaker and why it's on the market. So let's first talk about the obvious. Let's talk about the cone surround here, which they list this as a carbon matrix composite material here. Um, it does share resemblance to a carbon fiber. Um, so that is gonna be one thing that you're gonna see. That's gonna make this essentially waterproof cone, um, even though I don't like to use that term. And then around here, I'm guessing this is the same treated cloth surround design as the CH model. But one of the biggest differentiation is right here, if you can see it, there is a rubber boot that is adhered to the cone and to the tweeter itself. So that combination is gonna help keep the water from intruding into the speaker, which was an issue that we had with the previous speakers. And then here, this is what they call a nanofram horn cover. This is gonna help repel the water off of the speaker, giving it a better chance to not make its way into the horn and into your saddlebag. And from the outside, you're gonna see this has got a, a nice rubber surround all the way around it. And then you've got your recessed holes for your screws all the way around. So for the front, that's your biggest difference there, which is gonna make this speaker their most element ready speaker. That's what I like to call them um, because it's gonna hold up the best to the UV, the water. If you're up north and you wanna ride in the snow, if that fits your fancy, you'll be able to. So let's turn this thing around, and this is where the speaker extremely shines. This has a two and a half inch voice coil for the mid with a one and three quarter inch tweeter voice coil. That is a good size increase from the previous model speakers. Um, but as you know, with larger voice coils comes two things. One is going to be a higher power handling rating and two, it's gonna be a less sensitive speaker as the voice coil's bigger. It takes more power to push them. So this speaker, according to Cicada, is rated for 400 watts RMS, 800 max, and this has a sensitivity of 92 decibels per meter. So it's a little less efficient than the previous models, but that's the give take that you have when you put these big voice coils on here. So that's one of the reasons why this is gonna be a better choice for certain applications. 
All right, like I said earlier, this is going to be your standard. The tweeter is going to remain an eight ohm voice coil and the mid is gonna be offered in a two and four ohm load. And according to Cicada, the frequency response is going to be 46 Hertz to 20,000 Hertz. And I'm going to stop and preface one thing with that. Just because a manufacturer says the frequency response of a speaker is for this example, 46 Hertz to 20,000 Hertz, that does not mean that that is going to be your crossover settings for this speaker. By no means would I ever tell you to run 400 watts through this speaker or even up to 800 at 46 hertz high pass. No way. This speaker, that is in the absolute perfect condition what the speaker will play like through what you'll see in our or further in the video later that when we run pink noise through it you'll see without a crossover yes the frequency range will go all the way down there but that is not a safe place to run them so i just want to preface frequency responses that manufacturers put up is not a high pass or a crossover recommendation one thing and i bring that up because cicada puts this right on top of your speakers for when you get them. According to Cicada, they go through some information here, but their recommended crossover frequency for these speakers, for the CHX 8.4 and 8.2, that's a two in the four ohm version, is 90 hertz and up 24 dB. So they're saying that you can run these speakers 90 hertz high pass if you're running them um, passive to where you use their crossover and the tweeter and the mid are together, 90 hertz up with a 24 db crossover that is a very steep crossover slope it's not quite vertical but it's it's uh, high so that's just one thing i want to preface with this just because i tell you the frequency response that does not mean please please do not set your dsp to those frequencies it will not work very well for you so one huge difference that they did on this and i'm so glad that they did is they have a very similar 12 db crossover that's offered it's pretty standard crossover for all cicada speakers all the compression horn style so they made it to where like with the harleys it's more plug and play you could plug these into the oem connection this wire here is going to branch off and go directly to the mid on the speaker because they're spade terminals then you go through the crossover and you got two female spade connectors that will plug into the back of the tweeter. So what they did here is you'll see there's this, idi there's this nice little inline connection. So what you can do is just unplug it. And then from here, you can plug in this resistor board, which is a tweeter attenuation um, board. So what this does is it's gonna allow you to select either a negative three or a negative six dB um, load on that speaker to bring it down three or six dBs. It's gonna to tone the tweeter down so it's not as loud and as bright. Because there has been some complaints with the compression horns that some people say, well, it's just way too bright. Um, I wish it was toned down a little bit. This is going to help. With the previous model speakers, they just have a single resistor and that would attenuate the tweeter down a little bit. I don't know the exact um, value of that, but it's very nice that they give you this additional um, resistor board that offers a negative three and negative six. So you'll just plug in one or the other and be able to select that. Um, one thing that we are going to do is we're going, we have the speakers in my bike now. We're gonna throw down the RTA with just pink noise to show you that frequency response. But then we're going to hook up this to give us the option of a negative three or negative six. So you can see it on the RTA, how it affects it. Um, last thing I'll say about this is make sure that these are in a spot where they can breathe because these resistors will create heat. You definitely don't want to like stuff this underneath something like plastic or cloth because with a little bit of heat over time, it could melt or catch that on fire. So just preface, keep this exposed with some air so it can cool off and vent. A comparison of the CH8s and the CHX8s 
And again, this is just comparing the two models to show you the difference. I'm not telling you one is better than the other. Um, they are very application based. So again, right off the rip, you can see the, just the structure of it itself. Like I said, the top um, CHX has that carbon matrix composite uh, cone with the treated cloths around there with that rubber boot. And then the horn has that membrane on it. You can see here the CH this. has for the cone material is a water repellent pressed paper cone with treated cloth surround. This speaker will still hold up to the elements. It's just not as well rated as the carbon, as you can tell. And then down here at the voice call or on the tweeter, there is no rubber boot surround there to help seal up that gap. And then the tweeter is obviously open. Um, Again, the voice coils, you can tell there is a substantial difference between the two because the CH has a two inch voice coil versus the two and a half and a 1.4 versus 1.75 inch voice coil for the tweeters. Both of these are offered in a two and four ohm load. And like I said, you can just tell the basket's different. This one's a little bit shallower than the uh, CH8s marginally um just overall this is a way beefier speaker and then again like i said when you get into a much larger um voice coils they're less sensitive the ch8 has a 99 db sensitivity versus the 92 db sensitivity of the chx that is where that bigger power handling comes in because the ch's are 250 rms and 500 max where is the CHX is 400 RMS and 800 max. That's where that voice coil size difference makes a huge difference in selecting these speakers. Um, like I said, the crossovers are the same for both of these speakers, whereas for the CH, it doesn't have that optional three, negative three, negative six dB resistor board for the tweeter, which is what they call a tweeter attenuator board, whereas the CHX does with this what the CH does have is an individual um, white resistor that can be soldered in. I'm gonna dare to say almost every single one of our um, packages that we do for customers, we solder them in now just to give us a little bit more attenuation down on that tweeter. All right, so now what I wanna talk about before we go out and we show you what these do on an RTA is let me talk about different applications on where I would use one versus the other speaker. So we have done some audio packages. A lot of ours for the Indians will be a single amp. So a single amp, we would look, we really like to run like the CHs in the fairing, um, two ohm, and then sometimes we'll run these in the lids at two ohm as well. So that pushes the amplifier of our choice at about 200 watts. I don't wanna get too fixated on wattage here. It's just to explain the application. Now, that would be a perfect because the CHs are a more efficient speaker. They can handle less power. That puts them almost at their RMS. Now, this is an application I would not recommend replacing those CHs with the CHXs because with the less sensitivity and the larger voice coils, these speakers do not like to be underpowered. They don't, they're not as efficient, so they're not going to be as loud. You have to hold up to the elements better but they won't sound as good as the CHs. Um, now let's flip that and say we have two amplifiers in there. I would feel a lot more confident in your lids bridging an 804, giving these both about 400 watts a piece in the lids versus the CHs. So that's where it comes down to properly designing your system. When you design your systems, which we'll get into a future video about, you want to know what your end goal is so you can work backwards because if you know your end goal is fairing lids and mid-base in the bags, you've got to kind of figure out what equipment will fit where to give you what power you have available to power your speakers. So that's why we harp so much on system design. It is so crucial and so important to know your overall design of your system. All right, so now it's time to go out back. Like I said, we have these in my 2020 Challenger. Right now that we have them in the lower fairings because we have eight inch lowers on our bike. I don't have any eight inch lids on the bike right now. 
So we're going to give you this uh, demo on these speakers in our lowers. My main thing I wanna focus on is I'm gonna show you that frequency response on the RTA so that way you can see for yourself like what is the frequency going on there. And then I'm hoping to show you on the RTA how it looks when you add that tweeter attenuator on there to show you that negative three and then negative six dB on there. And then from there, I'll play a couple of songs. I don't know how well it's gonna come across on the, the video, but I'm gonna do my absolute best with that. So let's go on out there, get these playing. So that way y'all can see just what these will do. All right, so we have the CHXs. These are the eights installed on our Indian Challenger. These are on an 800.4 bridged. So we have roughly 400 watts per speaker ran on these, which is just at the RMS for these speakers. Um, we have our DMRTA here with our laptop and we have our microphone at the speaker. So what we're gonna do first is I want to get a clip of running just pink noise through these speakers. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do no tweeter attenuator on it, then we're gonna do the negative three, then the negative six with all the pink noise, hopefully showing you what that does on the RTA up in the higher tweeter frequency. If I had to guess, this is gonna start kicking in around the 4,500 to 6,000 range and up to attenuate that tweeter down. So let's go ahead, we're gonna play pink noise on here. I'm going to cut the noise out, like I'll start it first, show you each one so you can hear the pink noise and then I'll roll it off so you guys aren't just listening to a straight pink noise static sound the whole time. So let's go ahead and get the no att tweeter attenuator first. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone It's not warm when she's away Ain't no sunshine when she's gone And she's always gone too long Anytime she goes away Wonder this time where As you saw in all of that footage, we wanted to take the time to show you just how these speakers perform on the RTA, just to show you the frequency response, the tweeter attenuator on an RTA through pink noise. What that's gonna do is give us an entire frequency response. And then you, as you saw in the pictures, which I'm gonna drop them in just a second, you can see how from no tweeter attenuator we had it up there at like the positive nine dB on that higher end. And as you see us adding in the negative three and the negative six tweeter attenuator to that, you can see in the following pictures 
how that drops from that nine to the six to the three. So those tweeter attenuators work and they are important when you're trying to fine tune a system, especially if you don't have those on their own channel or if you, for some reason, decide not to run a DSP on these, which we would not recommend. So here are the pictures of those on the RTA. So like I said, that tweeter attenuator definitely makes a huge difference. Now that, what that's gonna do is gonna, it's gonna help you the beginning process of your tuning. So it's gonna already attenuate that tweeter down so that way you can fine tune it later with your DSP to help bring it down. And ultimately, if you are using a separate amplifier like a 404 or an 804 for all your tweeters, you'd be able to fine tune those tweeters even more. So overall, I think Cicada did a amazing job with this new speaker. Um, this is definitely gonna have its place in the motorcycle audio market. Um, what I'm gonna be bold enough to say is this speaker is gonna fall in line with more of the competition level speakers. Um, I feel like Cicada did a really good job on this speaker when the design from the new tooling of the basket, the larger voice coils on this and really taking a stab at providing a really element ready speaker here with this um, composite carbon cone and then the weather treatment on it to really make sure that this can hold up to the elements. And this speaker is gonna be right up there with the carbon fiber Bamas and Euphorias, which you see in a lot of the competition builds. Um, and these speakers can handle a lot of power. Now, what I wanna talk about is that's where I was emphasizing in the beginning that these are gonna be situational or build specific speakers for your everyday rider that wants like a single amp i'm not going to recommend these because they handle way more power and like i said before with the larger voice coils the speakers are not as efficient as the ch8s that we have behind us because remember the ch8s are at a 99 db per one meter sensitive where these are at 92 a lot of people are gonna make all oh, it's only 7 dB. 7 dB makes a huge difference when it comes to these speakers. So you're really gonna to wanna to put this in that application where you can run big power. And that's a lot more found in the competition style bikes. And some of our rider bikes, we do push a good amount of power. So like we could put these in like a dual amp setup where we're running one amplifier for say our front stage. And we bridged our other amplifier to power these in the lids of our challengers. Please don't so. take what I'm saying as these are only a competition style speaker. They're not. I'm just saying that they rank up there with those other ones and those other speakers don't like little power. These speakers are very power hungry. So it really comes down to system design when you're choosing a speaker, especially this one. You wanna make sure that you have that adequate power. And like I said, I would run no less than 400 watts on these speakers. I would probably push it up closer to 600. And by no means am I telling you what to run on them. I'm not telling you that that's the best power rating. I'm just saying personally, that's the range where I would be um, because these speakers love power. As you push more power to them, they come alive. And like I said, it's just a phenomenal speaker. I'm super glad that Cicada took the feedback from the industry to push a element ready speaker in the market and one that also handles a ridiculous amount of power. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up. Um, I really hope that y'all like this video and we're gonna do a lot more of these on our speakers as I feel like we haven't taken the time to unbox these speakers and go over the specs and help compare them to some other speakers and give you real world applications on our own bikes of these speakers. Because I feel like that's needed to help you all make that choice, especially if you can't make it down here to us. And also I wanna showcase what these manufacturers are doing, the steps that they're taking and the tooling and the engineering behind these speakers because by no means is it a small feat. It is very expensive to design a new speaker and it takes a lot of time. Um, I've worked with Cicada on demoing some of these, the pre, um, prototype versions, and they did a phenomenal job on these speakers. So again, Cicada, well done on that. Um, and overall, I just want y'all's feedback. If there was something that we were missing in the video or something that you'd like to see more in detail, please let us know because that's how we grow this channel and that's how we get the information to you all that you want and need. So with that being said, I'm Brandon with Davidson Audio located here in beautiful Panama City, Florida.